Hello everyone and welcome to the video. This is going to be episode 4, I think, of my Raid Shadow Legends tier list on the epics from every single faction in the game. Today we have one of my probably top three, uh, three favorite factions here, which is going to be the Barbarians. Plenty of decent epic champions to be going over in today's video, so I'm excited to share it. Real quick, I wanted to question... Uh, that I'd like some answers to in the comments. So let me know if you guys prefer the longer content form for these types of videos where I review the kit of each champion, or if you'd prefer I just kind of cut that out and straight up rank the champions on a board for you to take a look at and then check out the kits yourself. Let me know what you think. I know the videos would be a lot shorter if I cut out the champion kit reviews, obviously, but uh, I know some people prefer the longer form content so they can kind of just put it on in the background and, you know, uh, play a game or whatever they might be doing. So, Barbarians, here we go. Uh, I got my ranking over here on the second monitor, of course, as usual. Oops, I just minimized my thingamabop. Give me one second. And there we go. We are good now, I believe. Perfect. So, first up, we are going to have Aina. Aina is a magic damage dealer. So she attacks one enemy two times, has a 20% chance of granting an extra turn, which is pretty decent. Same thing as Relentless Gear, basically. Attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing a weaken for three turns on a three turn cooldown, not a bad skill. And attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing a decreased defense for three turns on a four turn cooldown. Also heals herself by 30% of the damage inflicted. So, uh, Aina, I am actually going to go ahead and be placing over into the B tier. Uh, I know I said that damage dealers end up in the C tier unless they're doing something different, which in this particular case Aina definitely is. She hits pretty hard, she has decent multipliers on her kit, and overall bringing a decreased defense in the weekend is a pretty good skill to have, I would say. Next up we have Jotun, uh, Jotun however you want to say it. Uh, he has an attack one enemy, 40% chance of placing the small version of decreased defense for two turns. Definitely a power creep skill there, epics these days should be placing the big version. Attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for four turns on a three turn cooldown. And attacks one enemy, destroys the target's max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted. Damage increases by 50% if the target is under an HP burn on a 5 turn to a 4 turn cooldown. Definitely nothing too too crazy here. A power crept champion, that's for sure. Uh, he's basically Turvold from Wish.com, right? We get some recycled champions in the game and this is definitely one of them, sadly. Uh, if only he had... The same kind of kit as Turvold or something like that. Overall, I'm going to go ahead and put this guy into the C tier. In all honesty, this guy kind of deserves to be in the F tier, but considering that he does bring HP burn and whatnot, I can't really afford to put him that low. So, uh, higher rank than he should be, but, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Next up, we have Sakara. Uh, pretty cool looking champion here. I love the color palette of her outfit. Attacks one enemy, fills her turn mute by 25% if it's critical. She attacks all enemies three times. Each hit has a 60% chance of removing one random buff from the target on a four turn cooldown. Not too bad there. Excuse me. And she attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance. No, that would be incorrect. An 80% chance of placing an 80, uh, sorry, 25% weakened debuff for two turns on a four turn cooldown. Not a very impressive skill there. It revives her with 75% HP when killed, only available when Alika is on the same team. So. Uh, Sakara here is actually going to be ranked higher than a lot of people would probably imagine. Uh, where she's going to be placed is into the B tier. Uh, reason for that being her kit does hit pretty hard overall. Uh, this turn meter increase can be speed tuned around since it's consistent. Uh, the attacks all enemies three times, that's pretty good, especially considering she's buff stripping there. Uh, overall, just a very decent champion, even though her kit has been kind of power crept. Uh, very trash on the base attack, though, of course, so she's probably not going to be doing a whole lot of damage, even though she has good multipliers. But hey, having a support kind of champion that can actually uh, do some buff strips and whatnot, not a bad champion, that's for sure. A tour. A tour is going to have a 50% chance of a provoke on his A1 damage based on defense, not a bad skill. Attacks two times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing a provoke. This is just terrible on a three turn cooldown. Heals himself by 15% of his max HP and places a counter attack when he's hit with a crit. And he's immune to stun freeze and sleep debuffs, but that's only available when Kalia is on the team, which, spoiler alert, she's definitely not going to be. Uh, so a tour. 
where am I going to place him? A tour is going to be placed into the C rank. Uh, in all honesty, this is another champion that could very much be placed into the F tier without anyone really questioning it. But overall, I thought I'd just give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he is useful for, you know, maybe faction wars, doing some crowd control, but definitely a power crep champion, that's for sure. Next up, we have Armina. And we have attacks one enemy, has a 45% chance of placing a stun for one turn. Attacks all enemies, has a 100% chance of placing a decreased defense. Steals 7.5% of the turn meter from targets under decreased defense. And she decreases the turn meters of all, ally, uh, sorry, all enemies by 20%, has a 100% chance of placing a stun for one turn on enemies who have their turn meters fully depleted. Fills this champion's turn meter by 10% each time an enemy receives a stun debuff. So... Her passive is pretty decent. You could run it with somebody like Scylla the Drakes for Faction Wars, and she's going to be cycling through turns. Her A3 definitely isn't as good as it sounds. The chances of this actually proccing the stun are pretty low. Uh, Hell Hades was covering this champion a lot too, where he said that she just wasn't as good as everybody hyped her up for. Uh, Armina, I think I'm going to be very fair, and I'm going to go ahead and place her into the C rank. Uh, nothing too special about this champion. Don't really use her. She's not... Uh, not crazy by any means. So we have Alika, basically the sister that uh, stole the exact same outfit from Sakara there. Attacks one enemy, 30% chance books to a 50% chance of an extra hit. This hit is always critical. Attacks one enemy, ignoring 50% of the target's defense if their max HP is higher than this champion's max HP on a two turn cooldown. And attacks all enemies, 100% chance of increasing the cooldown of all enemy skills by two turns on a three turn cooldown, and then reviving her if Sakara is on the same team. Overall, this is actually a pretty good champion. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and rank Alika a little bit higher here. So I'm going to go ahead and put her into the A tier. In all honesty, she could be argued for in the S tier because of her cooldown increasing skill alone. But uh, there are better options for that coming up later on in the factions, uh, not Barbarians, sadly. So uh, if you're looking strictly at Faction Wars, she would be an S tier. If you're looking at Epics overall in the game, she would just be an A tier, just outside the S tier, but very, very close. Uh, Tashada attacks one enemy, 50% chance of placing an increased defense buff on herself for two turns, damage increase, uh, sorry, damage based on defense, so she is uh, going to do more damage based on her A1, right? Attacks three times at random, each hit 100% chance of placing a weaken for two turns, doesn't hit very hard, revives an ally with 40% HP and 100%, uh, sorry, 40% turn meter, then heals all allies by 15%. That's on a three turn cooldown, ally speed in faction crypts. Uh, that's not a bad aura as well. Overall, this champion, honestly, kind of a disappointing kit. Uh, she did have a buff semi recently, which you would hope she'd be doing better after that. Uh, because of all that, though, I am still going to go ahead and place her into the B tier. Uh, that's kind of the de facto place for support champions to be sitting. And the fact that she brings her own buffs, I mean, you know, it's not bad, right? Kalia, we're going to go ahead and review this champion pretty quickly. She was one of my first six stars, actually, when I was using her in Clam Boss back in the day because she hit a bunch of times and I thought she did good damage and blah, blah, blah. Attacks one enemy, 40% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns. I regret maxing her, by the way. Attacks all enemies, 75 books to 100% chance of placing a heal reduction. I'm not doing the combo kit because, again, you're probably not going to use any of these champions. This champion had a buff recently, by the way. Attacks three times at random. Each hit places an HP burn debuff for two turns on a four turn cooldown. A super power crep champion. Not really an important aura here either. Uh, her reviews are not accurate by any means. This is not a very good champion. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place Kalia into the F tier. Uh, if you'd like to see possibly a review or something like that on her in the future, I do have her built out. I have her 60 so I could definitely try her out. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see. Next up, we have Maeve. Yet again, one of the, uh, I guess, triplets from the Sakara and Alika there skins that has copied it. Her bowstring doesn't function, apparently. You know, it is what it is. Attacks one enemy, 70% chance of placing a sleep, has a 50% chance of granting an extra turn. I guess that'd be 62 if the sleep is placed. Pretty good A1 there overall, granting herself some extra turns. Attacks one enemy, placing a stun for one turn, places a stun for two turns if the target is under a sleep. So just straight up CC there, there's no chances or nothing like that on a four turn cooldown. And she attacks one enemy, enemies killed by this skill cannot be revived on a three turn cooldown, which is pretty good. She actually smacks pretty hard on all her skills as well, which is awesome. Uh, so because of that, 
and you know all the goodness that she brings she is going to go ahead and sit in the c tier uh she can't really get herself you know, higher than a C tier because damage dealers are pretty much a dime a dozen. Uh, there are some block revive champions out there. If she specialized more into CC or specialized more into damage, she'd be a bit better. Uh, because the thing with this is if you try and build her for CC, she's not going to damage. If you build her for damage, she's not going to have the accuracy to CC, right? So you kind of have to spec into one or the other. And unfortunately, Maeve just does not do that. We have Baroth the Blood Soaked, who has a small novel as his kit. Uh, so he attacks one enemy two times. First hit, 20%, books to 30% chance of filling his turn meter by 10%. Second hit has a 30% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%. Crazy champion. Uh, attacks one enemy two times on a three turn cooldown. The first hit places a shield equal to 25% of the damage inflicted on all allies for two turns. The second hit heals all allies by 10% of the damage inflicted. And a three. Attacks one enemy two times. First hit has a 100% chance of placing a decrease attack for two turns and 100% chance of removing any increase attack. The second hit does the same thing but with increase and decrease defense. So this guy would be pretty good if his cooldowns were a bit shorter and if he hit a bit harder. Uh, but overall, I do have to go ahead and what I think is fairly rare, uh, fairly rank him inside the C tier. Damage dealer doesn't really bring anything else to the table. He's going to go ahead and go into the C tier. This is Jamarsa. Jamarsa is one of the champions that you can get from doing the referrals there. So once you get like three accounts to rank 10 or something like that. Uh, I just created alts on blue stacks and did it myself and got her. Uh, so she has an A1 and we're going to pretend that Cronam is never on the same team as her by the way because most people aren't going to have him. Attacks one enemy has a 30% chance of placing a sleep for one turn. This books up to a 50% chance which is not bad. Heal a target ally by 30% of their max HP and fill their turn meter by 30% on a three turn cooldown. Definitely not a bad skill. And revives all dead allies with 30% HP and 30% turn meter on a five turn cooldown, which is a long time for a revive. Uh, however, her passive here is what really brings her up. So whenever an ally uses an active skill, which is something besides a passive and an A1, she has a 20% chance of decreasing the cooldown of that skill by one turn. And this does not have a cooldown. So if you want to think about it simply, this champion is essentially bringing reflex gear to your team, your entire team. Uh, so you don't need to depend on that reflex gear so much. You can just bring this champion. Additionally, this is going to stack with reflex gear. So you can do some crazy things just turn cycling someone like a Seer or a Cold Heart or a Husk or a Royal Guard or something like that, right? Where she absolutely just helps cycle through. Your support champions, their cooldowns can be decreased, all that sort of good stuff. Jamarsa, she is going to go ahead and sit inside the F tier. Or sorry, sorry S tier. Uh, she absolutely deserves that position considering the kit she brings. She has a revive, she has a heal, she has a CC on her A1, right? She's an insane champion already. But then you combine with that the fact that she is the only champion in the game that does something like this. That is absolutely crazy. So fantastic champion there overall. Definitely deserves to be in S tier. Next up, we have Wode Painted, who got buffed semi recently as well. Uh, so Wode Painted has an attack one enemy two times, has a 30% chance of placing a block active skills debuff for one turn. She full cleanses herself and one random debuff from all allies, then heals her by 100% of her max HP and heals all allies equal to 50% of the surplus heal. Decent base HP on her, so that is a pretty good heal. Afterwards, she places a reflect damage buff on all allies for two turns on a four turn cooldown, then she gets an extra turn. And she attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing a block active skills for two turns on a three turn cooldown. So... This champion here, and excuse me, I'm just looking over at my notes to see where I had ranked her, but uh, so Wode Painted here, she is actually going to be placed into the A tier. Uh, prior to her buff, she probably would have been down in the F tier, but they did actually do a rework of her, and she is a pretty decent champion now. Hi, Katoon is going to attack one enemy, has a 40% chance of placing a decreased speed for two turns. Her A2 fills the turn meter of all allies by 15% and places an increased speed on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. And she attacks all enemies, 75% chance of placing, uh, or sorry, decreasing the turn meter by 15%, excuse me, increases ally speed in all battles by 19%. So overall, not too bad of a champion. She definitely has been our crap though quite heavily. Um, 
especially when it comes to looking at like what other epics are doing right so she definitely isn't as good as she used to be that's for sure uh, because of that the highest that i could actually justify to myself placing her was going to be the b tier there are so many better champions even for late game than high Katoon. so for example apothecary that is a rare deacon armstrong that's another epic that we covered right like there's just so many better options than her uh, that are doing basically the same thing but with more utility and the same aura right so there's not really a reason to pick high Katoon over someone like a deacon armstrong the only chance that you would use someone like a high Katoon is if you don't have an ecmo if you don't have an arbiter if you don't have a deacon if you don't have an apothecary so as you start going down the list right the chances of you actually using her are lower and lower we have vala who was an amazon prime champion back in the day she attacks one enemy two times increases the damage inflicted by 15 percent if they're under a shield she removes all shield buffs then attacks all enemies, 30% books to a 50% chance of placing a decreased defense on all enemies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. She places a shield on herself equal to 20% of her max HP, terrible base HP. Also places an increased defense on herself for three turns and fills her turn meter by 50% on a three turn cooldown. Decent base defense, which is alright. Decreases the damage received by her by 15% while under a shield. So, Vala. Where would I place her? I'm going to go ahead and actually just place Vala into the C tier. Vala is not that good of a champion. She's not going to do a whole lot of damage, and she's very selfish with her buffs, so she doesn't deserve to be anything above the C tier, in my opinion. Let me know if you disagree. We have Farrakhan the Fat. He attacks one enemy, 50% chance of placing the big version of decreased defense. Attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing an HP burn, and two 5% poison for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. He places an increased crit rate and increased crit damage on everybody except for him for three turns. Then all allies except this champion will attack one target enemy. So this is on a four turn cooldown. It's an ally attack where you choose the target from an epic champion, which is something that some legendaries don't even offer. Uh, so that is already fantastic. And then he deflects 20% of all incoming damage this champion receives onto all allies. The damage gets spread equally across all allies. So he basically has a built in ally protection for himself which helps him to stay alive just a little bit more, which is helpful. Because of his kit, Farrakhan is, to the surprise of no one, I'm sure, going to actually sit inside the S tier. Uh, he is a very interesting champion, fantastic addition to the game, would love to see more like him. We have Huskarl, who is actually an epic fusion from back in the day. Uh, this guy has a 40% chance of a stun on the A1. He has a 75% chance of a stun on the A2. He decreases the turn meters of everybody not under a stun by 15% and removes all stun debuffs from all allies, then places an increased defense and an increased resistance on everybody for two turns on a four turn cooldown. Additionally, he is immune to stuns and he increases the damage inflicted by all allies when attacking enemies under stun debuffs. Overall, this guy has a pretty decent champ, uh, or sorry, a pretty decent kit considering that he was an epic champion that was free for everyone. Because of that and the damage and the utility he brings, I'm going to go ahead and place him into the A tier. You can really start to see the synergy with him if you run him with somebody like Syl in Faction Wars or even Armina in Faction Wars, right? The amount of stuns that they're putting out, the increased damage passive from him, it's going to be absolutely crazy. We have Harkin Greatblade. Harkin is attacking one enemy. She places an extra hit if the attack is critical. She attacks one enemy, has a 100% chance of placing a weaken for two turns before attacking on a four turn cooldown, and she attacks one enemy applying a debuff spread effect, taking two random debuffs from the target and placing them on all enemies. She also extends the duration of those debuffs by two turns, will not extend the duration of debuffs on the initial target. This is on a four turn cooldown. It's overall a decent skill. Uh, however, with her, the problem is you're not really going to use her anywhere unless you have very specific comps in mind. So. She's going to go ahead and sit in the C tier. She is very useful uh, for someone like Rhonda because Rhonda is placing a block passive and block active skills which can't be resisted. And Harkin, if she's doing a debuff spread and the initial debuffs were unresistable, her debuff spread is going to be unresistable as well. So you can possibly hit those duchesses in the arena even if they have high resist and put the block active skills on them, right? We have Sawai Firstborn. She is going to attack one enemy. 50% chance of placing a decreased defense. Places a 50% attack and a increased damage on herself for two turns if it kills an enemy. Interesting icon there. Uh, she attacks all enemies. 100% chance of placing a decreased attack for two turns on a three turn cooldown. 
and attacks one enemy before attacking has a 100% chance of placing a weakened for two turns on a three turn cooldown. Overall, not a bad champion. Kind of a power crap skill, uh, but just because of what she brings to the table, she is still going to make it into the C rank. She does hit fairly hard from her multipliers, uh, which is nice. It's always nice to have a support champion that can hit hard as well, right? So uh, next up, we have Sky Touched Shaman, who's actually going to be in the thumbnail. Uh, so she attacks all enemies, already good for a stun kit or something like that, right? Heals by 15% of the damage inflicted if she has less than 50% HP. Boosts her turn meter by 20% if she has more than 50% HP. Removes all debuffs from all allies, then places a block debuffs buff and a revive on death buff on all allies for two turns on a four turn cooldown. And she damages herself by 10% of her max HP at the start of each turn. She heals all allies except herself equal to half of the champion's current lost HP. She places a 30% increased speed on herself for one turn at the start of each turn. Also has a 50% chance of placing a fear on herself for one turn. So the thing with this uh, is she's basically healing everybody an insane amount. You build her in an immunity set, and she's going to go ahead and uh, basically just ignore the fears that she's placing on herself. You put her into the uh, mastery, which actually allows you to get the block debuffs when a fear expires, you know, whatnot. She's really good for the arena as a ghost second cleanser because of her revive on death, uh, as well as the block debuffs, right? Going up against somebody like a torment or something like that, that's really good. Overall, this champion is absolutely fantastic. I was very happy to pull her. She was on my wish list for a long time. And she's going to go ahead and rank into the S tier without question. So that brings us to the end of the tier list. As you can see here, the uh, Barbarians, they're very bottom heavy, right? With a lot of their damage dealers. But then the supports that they have in here and, well, mainly the supports. No damage dealers really rank themselves higher than about here, apart from maybe Huskarl. But the supports... And the one damage dealer that they have on offer there, they are really good champions, right? So definitely a very strong faction. I'm very excited to continue through with the faction reviews here and, you know, doing the tier list on everyone. Let me know down below what you guys think of the series so far. Here's this for anyone that wants to see it once again. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.